We've got a little egret out there trying to catch some fish. Beautiful morning down here at Osprey House. I'm hoping to get some Osprey photos here this morning. Just took a few photos of this little egret trying to chase some food. The tide's about halfway out. This morning I want to talk about light. Not the way that you think about light. Has a content creator on YouTube. Light is very important to me and to other content creators as well. Have you ever noticed that when you see content creators doing content for YouTube, we are always in good light, unlike where I am today. Now, right now, I am correctly exposed. I've got a fairly dark background, but I'm facing the dark area. What happens if I want to show you what I'm taking photos of? Then I'm in the dark, but my background is very bright. And this is something that I struggle with because it's very hard to get the combination right. It's either I get a nice background and I'm very dark and then I've got to edit the video and I don't look very nice because it's very grainy or I'm correctly exposed and the background is just blown out. So you don't see anything. Today, we're going to talk about what I've got to help me get correctly exposed video of myself and of my background. And this is the Altsun R8 RGB video light. Stainless steel case, has a power bank inside, will last up to 2.5 hours on full power. I'm out here just to show you how good this light is. Then I'll quickly go back to my office and we'll discuss all the technical details of this light and why you might think about buying this light for your photography. Not just if you're doing content for YouTube, but when you're out and about, especially for astrophotography and you want to light up your subject and you get beautiful light. Not only can I use it in landscape orientation, but I found that if I use it in portrait orientation like that, all I'm doing is just highlighting myself and my background isn't affected too much. This is how I normally record videos. I got a beautiful background here, but can you see me? I am so backlit. This is how I normally record videos. And then when I get home, I have got to put so much processing, bring out so much of the shadows, and I look very grainy. But I want to show people this beautiful background, and I'm stuck. Do I blow out the highlights, or do I just accept this? Because you want to see what I'm taking photos of, or what I'm taking videos of. Now let's turn on the Altsun R8 RGB light, and you will see the difference. Now I am lit up, not too much. The light is at 80%. But look at the difference with this light on compared to without the light on. This is the beauty of having a fill light like this. Some lights don't give you what this light does. This is RGB light. So I can have all the colors. I can choose my white balance. When we take photos, white balance to us is very important. When it's for wildlife, I just choose natural light auto. But when it comes to landscapes, I like to be able to set my white balance. This Altsun R8 enables me to do that. I can choose the white balance and having my light with the same white balance settings as my camera means that I'm not going to get any color distortions at all. Now I've just quickly moved. The sun's coming through and you could just see like white patches on my face. But I've still got the light on and you can see that I'm very well lit. Now I'll quickly turn the light off and you're going to see the difference. And look now, I'm in the shade. And it's not only that, my ISO that I'm recording at is so much higher. Just before my ISO was only at a thousand. Now it's at 4,000, which means my video is going to be more grainy. I like going into rainforests and photographing fungi. This is going to be a great light for me. I can just put it on top of my camera and it'll give me that light that I want. Do I want just ambient light? Do I want stronger light so that I can keep a fairly high shutter speed? This light has so much potential. Before I go into the specifics of the Alstron R8 RGB video light, I have to mention that this video is sponsored by KNF Concept. Just over a month ago, KNF Concept contacted me asked me if I'd like to collaborate with them and to choose two products off their website for me to do a review. Once I've done the review, I can keep whatever I chose. I chose the Alton R8 RGB video light and also a nice little backpack, which I reviewed a couple of weeks ago. 
and that is the Alpha Air 25 litre camera backpack. I'll put a link up here to the review if you want to see it. Now this is how the Alton R8 RGB video light comes in. It comes in a very nice little box and the first thing I notice is on the back of the box here it has all the specifications. The strength of the light, what the kelvins on the light are like the minimum and the maximum. It also comes with this nice little felt patch where the light sits in. It also has a USB-C to USB-A cable to charge it. Also comes with the little adapter here so that I can screw it onto my camera. And it also comes with a nice little instruction booklet with all the details on this Alton R8 RGB video light. When we look at the light, it is quite heavy, but heavy in a good sense because it is made from aircraft aluminium. You know that if you actually bump it, it's not going to crack if it was made from plastic. Now here are the dimensions of this light and how heavy it weighs. So the working time of the light is two and a half hours at 100%. Charging time is two and a half hours. Color temperature ranges from two and a half thousand kelvins to eight and a half thousand kelvins. Brightness range from 0% to 100. The size is 13 centimeters by seven centimeters by one and a half centimeters. The weight is 260 grams. Now when it comes to kelvins, you might say, well, why such a big range? Well, it just depends what you're using it for video or for taking photos because it depends on the subject, it depends on the lighting conditions. This morning when I was out at Osprey House, I'd set the kelvins to 5,000, which is daylight. If I wanted a warmer atmosphere or if I was taking photos late in the afternoon and I wanted to highlight the foreground with this light, I would have set my kelvins to around six and a half or seven thousand kelvins. That will give me a very warm light. On the other hand, if I was taking photos of the Milky Way at night or videotaping myself doing a tutorial on photographing the Milky Way, I would set the video light to around 3,700 kelvins or maximum, let's say 4,000 kelvins. This will give me a bluish light because if I'd left it at 5,000 kelvins, which is daylight, I would look very orangey. I wouldn't look natural. So this is why you look for a light that has a wide Kelvin range, not just a bright light. Another good thing with this light is it has this little lever on the bottom here, this aluminum lever, where you can move the light around on your camera. This is a very good idea. Turn the light on and on the back here, you can see there's a little LED panel. It shows you the strength of the light. So as you're adjusting the strength, it shows you the strength, also will show you what kelvins you're using. If you're using 3000 kelvins, it'll display 3000 kelvins. If you're using another function for different types of colored lights, it will also tell you that. So a very handy way to know exactly what you are doing. Plus it has a reference bar here to give you an idea of what colors that you can choose from basically any color of the rainbow. Now this morning I stated that I was at 80%. If you looked at the video, you would have seen that compared to no light and with the light, that my background was slightly brighter. This is because when I record video, that it meters for the whole area. So as soon as I increase this light on myself, it also increased the light in the background but still quite acceptable that you could see the background you could see the river and all that in the background and i was still fairly well lit now like i stated you have the little wheel here where we can adjust the power and it just goes 10 11 12 13 14 and so on but if i want to increase the light very quickly there is a little button in the center of the wheel here which jumps the power by 20%. So I'm at 18 now, I'll bring it to 20. If I just click the wheel here, I'm down to zero. If I click it again, I'm at 20, I'm at 40, I'm at 60, 80, 100%. Very bright. If I wanna go the other way, I just keep clicking it. I'm back down to 80, 60, 40, 20. Now I can just roll it back around to 10. This is a very good idea because you don't have to just keep turning the wheel. If I want to go straight to 80% from zero, I'd have to keep turning that wheel quite a bit. Whereas with the little button here, I just click it a couple of times and I'm going from, let's say 5% up to 100% within a couple of seconds. The bottom wheel here adjusts my Kelvin. So at the moment I'm set to 5,000. Now I'm at 7,000 kelvins. I can roll it all the way up to eight and a half thousand. And you can see it's a very bright light. If I roll it the other way, 
you can see now that it's a very orangey light. So you can see that this works quite well. There's another little button in the middle here, which is your function button. This allows you to choose any type of color. So if you're into photography and for example, you're wanting to take a photo of a white flower, but you don't want that white flower or you want to add some artistic flair, you can choose any color you want. If I press this button here, now I have a very pinkish light. If I press it again, I get a strobe light effect. That's it. It only lasts a couple of seconds. If I press it again now, now I'm at 5000 Kelvin. If I press it here, now I am in this function where I can choose any colored light. So I use the bottom wheel here. I can adjust it. You can see the lights change in color. If I go the other way, it just makes it more pinkish, purplish. And this is very good because although I state I like shooting at 5000 Kelvins, which is daylight, if I'm in an area where I have old globes and they're giving off a very warm effect, I don't want to be looking the same color as those lights. I can adjust the color of the light to suit my environment. So even though I've got a very warm glow around me, I don't want to be warm. I can adjust this with this function to suit my environment. Now, not only does this light have quite a lot of features, but the reason I bought with this little lever on the bottom here is that I can turn this light into a key light. Sometimes you don't want the light facing you because if you're like me that wear glasses, if the light is head on, you end up having a lot of reflections in your glasses. I can turn this light around like this and it becomes a key light. So the light is coming from the side but my face isn't the same brightness. I've got one side of my face which is well lit and another side which has a little bit of shadow effect, which looks quite good in some circumstance. If you've noticed here, there's a little groove here. This is to put a microphone on so I can use it as a key light and a microphone. If you're doing camera vlogs or if you're videotaping a family event, you've got your light here. You can put your microphone on top. You don't need an extra attachment to hold your microphone, which I find is very good. How would I rate this light? Well, I rate it very good. It has all the features that I want. It already comes with a diffuser, so you don't have to look at buying a diffuser because some of these lights don't have diffusers. And a diffuser means just that it diffuses the light. It makes the light more even. It is well built. The only thing that I think that could be improved is that instead of a seven watt light, I would like it to be a nine watt light to give me more light if I needed. Saying that, when I was at Osprey House, and this place is atrocious for lighting. This is why I did the review at Osprey House. I have a very dark area and the background is very bright. I want to test it out in its worst case scenario and it did very well. If I was in a forest environment photographing fungi and all that, I know that this light has enough strength, but just having that extra little amount of wattage from seven to nine, I think would be very good because sometimes you want a lot of light to light up your subject. Not so much to light up yourself if you're vlogging, but to light up your subject. That's the only thing that I can think that it would be better. If you're wanting to buy this light from KNF Concept, I'll put a link in the description where you can buy the light off their website. If you have any feedback or questions about this light, leave it in the comments box below. If you like this video, give a big thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your photography or videography. I'll see you next time.